Um, Christine, can you read today? If you, uh, you are uh, Clarence. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, um, whichever one of you guys do it, I need Amos chapter three, eleven through twelve. Um, as we're getting situated here again, I'm just giving it a couple seconds. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being so merciful, Father God. We thank you for yet giving us yet another day, Father God, a day that we've never seen before and a day that we definitely don't deserve, Father God. Thank you for looking beyond our faults, taking care of our needs. Thank you for our current state of health, Father God. Thank you for being a God of provision and protection, Father God. Thank you for your word that has been a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you for adding your super to our natural, Father God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father God, which not only corrects us, but it also comforts us, Father God. I pray for those that are under the sound of my voice, one by one and name by name, there's someone saying, Lord God, come see about me. And then there's just someone that's saying, Lord, you've been so good. And I just want to say thank you, Father God. So I pray for those folks. I pray for the sick today. I pray that you would heal right now according to your excellent mercy in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. I pray for those that are laying in the hospital with Father God. I pray, Father God, for the one that's behind the walls of the penitentiary, Father God. And I pray for those that don't know you in the pardon of their sin. I pray that you are saved right now according to your excellent mercy, Father God. I pray right now that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart that they be acceptable to you as you are my maker and my redeemer, Father God. Be glorified in this time set apart to worship you. Be glorified in this time that's been set apart to acknowledge you. Be glorified in this time, Father God, that's been set aside just to tell others about a risen Savior, Father God. And we'll be so careful to give your name all the praise, all the honor and glory. But this is my prayer in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 So if I can get, um, Humpy, if I can get you to read Amos chapter 9, verses 11 through 15, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay. This up. Okay. Amos 9, verses 11 through 15. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his, his ruins and I will build it as the days of, of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathens which are called by my name, said of the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the trader or treater of grapes of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt and i will bring again the captivity of my people of israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine of thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, said the Lord thy God. Amos 9 verses 11 through 15. Amen, thank you so much. Um, and can I now have uh, Amos 3, 11 through 12 read? Yes, sir. Therefore, thus says the Lord, an adversary there should be even there shall be even around about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy power shall be still. Thus says the Lord, as the shepherd takes out of the mouth of the lion two legs and a piece of an ear so shall the children of Israel be taken out of the dwellings in Samaria, in the corner of a bed, and in Damascus, in a couch. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, another week, I'm, I'm in the book of Amos. Um, last week, uh, um, the message was hitting folks on the chin, Stephen Smith. Uh, we talked about being committed and not simply involved. Uh, we talked about going through the motions when it came to our worship, 
we talk about watering down all of this stuff. And I know um, I got a lot of calls and a lot of texts last week from people who said that the message uh, ministered to them. Um, some said the message convicted them. Uh, some say the message got their attention. And um, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I put it like that. Um, uh, so many people last week, Humphrey, after last week's message, let me know that they were uh, busted up and broken down. Sometimes, you know, what we realize is sometimes we have to be broken down to be made. Uh, sometimes we have to be um, wrecked to be restored. Um, sometimes. And, and um, I'm looking for someone today. I don't know. I believe that um, I have the word for the moment, but I'm looking for the one who um, who says, uh, truth be told, pastor, I'm, 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 I'm busted up. I'm broken. Um, um, or it seems my world around me is slowly falling apart or, um, or has fallen apart. Uh, someone who's saying, you know what, um, I screwed up and, and I'm paying for it right now. Um, I misstepped, I misquoted, I miscalculated, and now I'm dealing with the consequences of me moving without the permission of God or me getting ahead of God or me not even consulting God. Um, um, I know, though, Humpy, that not a whole lot of people are going to admit that. Um, I know that not many people will, will admit to getting sidetracked and off track, not many, not, not church folk. Um, not many people will say, you know what, I'm feeling lost right now. Um, not many people will admit that, hey, my life is a mess right now, but um, not many people are going to openly say my marriage is a mess right now, or my walk in my witness is weak right now. Um, not many people are going to do that, but I'm looking for one or two real folk today to say, you know what, in the midst of that hodgepodge of all of that stuff that you mentioned, I'm sitting right there. Um, there's some stuff in me that's a mess. There's some stuff in me that ain't quite right. There's some stuff around me that's falling apart. Um, there's some stuff in me that's broken. Um, there's some stuff that's out of sorts right now. I see a couple of hands. I saw some heads nodding. Uh, I see a couple of folks saying, yep, I have. Or, I'm right there. I'm not putting you out there. Um, I'm going to let you go ahead and be who you say you are. And for those of you who aren't, hallelujah, anyhow, I'm just wanting to talk, though, to the one that's saying, yeah, man, um, as I look around, I see a lot of brokenness. As I look around, I see a lot of stuff that's not quite right. And when I look into my spiritual mirror, I got folks fooled, but there's some stuff about me that's kind of out of sorts. Um, as a matter of fact, the smile that you see me wearing from day to day, it's fake, it's, it's plastic, it's a front right now. But now that I'm sitting here to myself, um, I, I'm broken. Again, I'm just trying to talk to a couple. I know that this message isn't for everyone. God bless you, George Johnson. But I pray for the one that this message may be for today. Now, this is what I'm going to say. Um, for those of us who know God, for those of us who says we are in Christ, for those of us who says I am a Christian, for those of us who says I'm not just a believer, I'm a knower. I've had that experience with Jesus, and there's no doubt in my mind that he is the real deal. He is the real thing. And you know what? I, I know for a fact that I have been adopted into the family of God. This is what I'm going to say to you today. Uh, and this is not one of those messages like last week. I know some of y'all took it on the chin, but I am going to say this, though. You know what? We can't live any old kind of way. I'm just going to say that. Just because you a king's kid don't mean that you can act like a ragamuffin. I, I'm just saying, uh, just because, you know, uh, yeah, hope y'all said it. Uh, just because you a king's kid don't give you free rule to go out and be stupid and disrespectful Amen. and ungrateful. I'm Amen. just saying that this afternoon, just because Amen. you're a king's kid. Uh, and and um, I want you to know something because of who we are, because of the privilege that we have in our life, because of the callings that we have on our life, 
because of the name that we carry, you know, our name means something. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, just because of that name, I want you to know that when we step out of the way and do things our way and not God's way, and we're disrespectful and ungrateful, Stevie Smith, guess what? There are consequences. Yeah. I know nobody want to hear that. Uh, hey, I, I guarantee you, um, Humpy, whenever you cut up Ada gave you some consequences. I, I'm quite sure of it at least once or twice in your life. You get what I'm saying? Um, there were consequences when you cut up down there in Mount Hope thinking you was going to do things Humpy's way. Um, you had to deal with Ada there. Um, but today, you know what? I didn't come here to beat anybody up today, George Johnson. I came today. Um, I came to encourage somebody. I, I came to encourage the one who says, hey, pastor, enough was enough. You hit me pretty hard last week with last week's message. As a matter of fact, you hit me two weeks in a row. Uh, I didn't come here to be beat up on. I need an encouraging word from the word. Um, um, I, I'm not looking for a motivational speech um, from the word of God. I need encouragement. So if that's you, I want you to go ahead and say it or put it on the timeline. Say, encourage me. Um, encourage me. I, ch I, I challenge you to encourage me. I dare you to seek to try to encourage me. I dare you to use the word today to encourage me. Am I talking to somebody today that says, hey, man, I'm beating myself up enough. I don't need you to beat me up encourage me. I, I, I just, and maybe somebody said, man, I'm sitting in this pitch. You ain't down here with me. Encourage me. I'm wondering if someone says, yes, man, I'm looking at this mess in my life and in my home. I don't need to hear it from you. Encourage me. I'm just looking to see if there was someone that would say, encourage me. I'm so glad, Missy Green, that you're saying that. I'm so glad you asked like that. Um, so the one that says everything is falling apart. Man, we look at our society and it's discouraging. Uh, some of us look in our bloodline and it's discouraging. Some of you are looking at your health and it's discouraging. Some of you are looking at your finances and it's discouraging. Some of you are looking at your school systems and it's discouraging. And um, I mean, you got your, the economy falling apart. You got your family falling apart. You got marriages falling apart. You got careers falling apart. And, um, and your emotions are all over the place. And yes, I'm talking about your health, but you need to know that God is still God, first and foremost, and he is still the ultimate. So because he's the ultimate, Stevie Smith, um, we use this term so loosely that I, I'm, I'm kind of scared to say it half the time, Humpy, but he is still yet in control. Well, I hate to say that nowadays, just because of how people use it. But um, I'm going to say this, Stevie Smith, he has not fallen from his throne. Um, and even though what you're looking at today may not feel good, may not appear good, or anything like that, newsflash, God is still good. Can I get somebody that will testify that God is still Good. Um, in the midst of you testifying, I'm going to tell you, those of you that may be feeling a little down this day, um, he still loves you. Yes, you. As a matter of fact, you can put that on your timeline, big old capital M-E, me. Yes, I want you to know that he still loves you. Go ahead and accept that today. M-E, me, yes. Um, and guess what? Your situation may suck right now. Your circumstance may suck right now. Uh, things may not look the way you want them to look, and things may feel like they're falling apart. But guess what? He even has a plan for your current situation and your circumstances. Uh, so if you believe that, that's an opportunity for you to put a praise on it right there. Um, if you believe that God still loves you, that he has a plan for you and your circumstances, that's the reason to say, Lord God, I still thank you. I still praise you. And yes, I still trust you. Um, so here it is. Um, I got some folks on here, truth be told, though, uh, Sister Jackson, that are um, thinking that God is ticked at them, you know, um, and because he's ticked off at you because you've been so disrespectful, yes, you have, um, that he's making you pay uh, because you had the nerve to worship other guys. Um, he's, he's ticked at you and he's making you pay because you walked away from your position in the church to do what you do. You think he's making you pay because you're struggling with doing the right thing when you know what the right thing is. You think he's making you pay. Uh, that's the same type of theology, y'all, that 
that Job's friends had. Y'all remember that, you know, you, um, hey, you're struggling right now, humping you're sick, it's because you did something wrong. You get what I'm saying? Hey, um, guess what, you know what? Um, uh, I, I talked to couples that says, you know what love is, is being able to not wish ill on someone. And I said, it's a simple test of how much you love someone. They mess around and you share all your secrets with them and you tell them what it hurts you. And then the first thing you know, y'all get in an argument, you know, and then they draw right back to what they know hurts you. Hey, don't you ever say this to me? And they say it to you, right? And then as they're walking off, they stub their toe on the chair. And instead of you being concerned about their toe, you thinking that's what you get, you know? Now, I, I, that's the thing. That's what you're thinking. God functions like that. Like, okay, that's what you get. But that's not so. That's the wrong um, theology there. You're thinking that God is giving you something now because like Job's friends, you must deserve it. But let me give you a newsflash. I think everybody on here that's either typing on the timeline looking at this thing on the timeline or looking at me on Zoom, all of you are inhaling and exhaling. Even if you got asthma, emphysema, CPD, whatever they call it, um, you, even though you may have all those things, you're inhaling and exhaling. So let me tell you something. If you're doing that, you're breathing, that means you're living. Let me tell you something. You're not getting what you deserve. Mm. How can I put it out there like that? You're inhaling and exhaling. Uh, uh, it may be a struggle right now. Uh, and you may have some things going on with you, but you're alive. And guess what? You don't deserve that. I know I didn't rub somebody wrong already. Humpy, your job today is to pray for me, okay? Pray that pray that somebody don't curse me, okay? Pray for them that they don't curse me, okay? Um, so when I looked at Job's situation, since I brought it up, um, Thomas, the thing I was tripping on is um, neither Job nor his friends, in the midst of all of this craziness that was going on in his life, they didn't know, they didn't realize that in the midst of all the craziness, something was going on in heaven too, though. Mm. See, some of y'all are in some crazy situations, going through some stuff, going through some hurt and going through some pain. And what you fail to realize, something's going on in heaven right now. God is working on a plan for you and your circumstance and your situation behind the scenes. Um, again, you like to say it, so why don't you embrace it? God is in control. He has the final say. So a restoration plan is in place. Newsflash. I said it earlier, I said that God was a need meter. I, and I guess with my Jersey vernacular, folks had a hard time catching it at first. But what I want to say is this morning, is, is, is this afternoon, is God is a restorer, okay? He's able to take a, um, a wreck and restore it. You get what I'm saying? He's able to take a hood rat and make him a royal priesthood. Amen, hallelujah. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so the one whose life is falling apart, you know, um, just because I told you that he's a restorer, if you believe that, even in the midst of your brokenness, even in the midst of things falling apart around you, if you believe that is is for you, if you believe that God has a plan, He's working in heaven for you, there a praise can go right there for you this morning. Okay, I, I come to encourage some folks today. I didn't come, y'all, to be glad. I ain't I ain't shooting too today. Um, he can put the pieces in your life back together again. Now, I didn't have a whole lot of reading done, even though I had a whole lot of scriptures that I was looking at, Desiree, to kind of substantiate where I'm going. But I was reading Amos chapter 3. Stevie Smith, I was reading Amos chapter 3. And it's amazing how you can read something, and all of a sudden, you'll hit a verse that'll mess you up. Mm -hmm. You'll hit a verse that you've seen for decades, and when you see it, it's like you saw it for the first time and it'll mess you up. So two verses today in Amos chapter three kind of mess me up because I think I said it this morning on the um, Sunday school, how God has a way of reversing things, um, how he can take a bad situation and turn it around for good, how he's able to flip scripts. I believe I mentioned that today on Sunday school. Did I say that this morning on Sunday school humping? Keep me, keep me honest. I believe I did. Okay, so um, I messed around and saw these two verses and um, I saw encouragement. I saw encouragement. There was some folks, I want to make sure I'm still talking to you. If that was that person who says, encourage me, I want you to put on there. Yep, that was me. That was me. So I want to make sure who I was talking to again. Um, I said, encourage me. That was me. Because um, then I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read these two verses, okay? Um, and I was crazy, okay? So I says, I come to encourage folks. And the first scripture that I'm going to read that I had read says, an enemy will overrun the land. 
pull down your strongholds and plunder your fortresses. That don't sound very encouraging to me. That sounds like you about to get busted up. Um, as a matter of fact, this was the word of the, of the prophet. He's like, basically, you're about to get busted up. Um, your spot's about to be blown up. Your families and your communities is about to be torn up from the floor up. But yet Brown says he has an encouraging word for me. Pastor, what in the hell are you talking about? Um, what I'm saying is, is this, again, what was being told to these people first and foremost is guess what? Your disobedience brings consequences. Plain and simple. You need to hold on with that. Now, y'all stay with me because I know folks ready to hang up because they said this dude says he's going to encourage me. And all of a sudden he's talking about my house being torn up and this, that, and the other. So here it is. Verse 12, minister to me. Verse 12, minister to me, Humphrey. Um, and, and Stevie Smith, you stay with me, man. Um, it says, as the shepherd takes out the lion's mouth, two legs, and a piece of an ear, so will the Israelites who sit in Samaria on the edge of their beds and in Damascus on their couches. Yeah, I know somebody saying that King James Version mix or whatever you're reading ain't really saying a whole lot to me. So, so is there someone that needs me to explain that? Can I, if, if, if there's someone that needs me to explain that, I want you to put it on the timeline. I want you to, will you please explain that to me? I, I, I ain't seen nothing to shout over yet. Can you please explain that to me? Um, I ain't heard nothing to shout about yet, Pastor. I, I see you there, Crystal. I see your hand raised. Um, I just want to know. If someone says, yes, will you please explain that to me? I see my wife, Pumpy. Uh, I, I see you. So um, I, got a, I got three folks that says, I need you to explain that. I got some other Bible scholars that's like, I got it. Okay. I see you there, Barry. Um, Desiree, I see you. Um, Amos was what I call a real deal prophet. Now, they say he was a minor prophet, and I got that. But I'm going to tell you, Roger, this cat was the real deal. See, um, he wasn't one of those cats that was caught up in your feelings. Mm. He wasn't caught up in the fact that if you disliked what he had to say or if you liked him or if you welcomed him, this cat was the real deal. He was like that cooking utensil they got on. He would just set it and forget it. You get what I'm saying? This cat would just put it out there like God gave it to him, and it was what it was. You get what I'm saying? Because he's like, hey, you don't like the message? Don't blame me. Blame God, as a matter of fact. But I'm going to tell you what he told me to tell you. And you know what? Um, if the shoe fits, you wear it and play kickball with it, baby. But if not, you keep it moving, however you want to do it. So here it is. He's like, yo, check this out. Um. Y'all need to change your ways. The pastor said the other week that, you know what, this week, watered down worship ain't going to keep working. If you're going to worship God, you're going to worship in the spirit and in truth. As a matter of fact, you can't keep flipping and flopping between God and all these false gods and idols that you've been working. Amos is like, yo, check this out. If you don't change your ways, God is going to send something real quick your way. He's going to send a judgment your way. He, he used the terminology. I mean, this is me just talking. I use the terminology. I used to say this in cats back in the day. I can imagine him saying, you know what? God's about to put something on you that soap and water just won't wash off. Ooh. I can imagine that. I can imagine, yep, he's about to put something on you that just soap and water won't wash off. I know Roger Dixon probably said that to a person or two. So here it is. Um, um, he's talking to Israel. He's talking to God's folks, God's chosen, mm -hmm. the ones that he raised up, mm -hmm. the ones that he took out of bondage, the ones that he took care of for 40 years in the wilderness. He fed and provided for them and protected them. I don't know. I'm talking to somebody on here right now saying, yep, uh, yep, God has brought me up, pulled me out of bondage. Um, he's messing around and fed me and provided for me and taking care of me, led me through some dry places, led me through some tough places, protect me in some dark places. And here it is. I'm, uh, he's chosen, just like some of you guys know that you've been chosen. God's property is what you call yourself. And yet, he, and he gave them a land that was flowing with milk and honey. It was nothing that they was needing. Everything they needed was right there. But guess what? He set them up real good. And, and guess what? They had a habit of flaking on them. How many of y'all got a habit of flaking on God? As good as he's been to you, as much as he's made a way for you, some of you can say he's healed my body. Some of y'all can say he's turned my life around. Some of y'all can say he made a way out of no way, and still yet you flaking. 
So here it is. This is Israel's thing. Now, so here it is. Um, they had a habit of flaking on God. And not only that, but they had a habit of turning their backs on him, worshiping him to worship false gods. You get what I'm saying? We talked about this last week, too. I know some of y'all saying, Brown, don't take us back to last week. Again, you said you weren't here to beat us up, but I'm, sometimes we need to be reminded just so that we don't end up find ourselves creeping back to the same place we've been delivered from. Stevie Sniff, you pray for me, man. So here it is. Um, they would say that they were grateful, just like a lot of us. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. You know, we get around the saints and we just, oh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And you're saying it, you're shouting it, you're spraying it and everything else. I'm grateful. But guess what? You ain't living grateful. And that's what it was there. They were saying from time to time that they were grateful, but they weren't living grateful. And what God would do because he loved them so much, he says, yo, Humpy, I love you too much to leave you like that. Uh, you, you're irking me. Like last week, I said the way you've been acting make me sick to my stomach, make me want to puke. You know what? But even in the midst of my sickness, you know what? I love you too much to leave you that way. So let me send somebody away. So what God would do is he would send prophet after prophet wow, after yeah. prophet after prophet to warn him, yo, stop being so disrespectful. Stop being so disrespectful. Has God not done enough? Boy, we've been talking about this stuff in Sunday school too. Has God not done enough for you to be loyal, for you to be committed, for you to be determined to stand for him? Has he not done enough? What more do you want him to do? You can't even say, I want, you know what? I want you to believe for me because the Lord's already done that too. What more do you want? So prophet after prophet coming to warn him, yo, y'all ain't going to keep tripping like this and getting away with it. There are consequences, you know, don't disrespect. But guess what? They just wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. Hard headed, just like some of us. I got any hard headed folks on here today who will be willing to say that. Yep, I'm hard headed. I'm going to tell you, I'm hard headed by nature. Don't tell me what I better do, because if you do it, chances are I won't do it. I'm just telling you that you don't tell me what to do. Hard headed by nature. But here it is. Um. So um, they, they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. So Amos is like, yo, something coming your way. Something coming your way for your disrespect. And he says, guess what? The Assyrians are coming. You know about the Assyrians. They, they bonafide hell ragers. The Assyrians are coming. They, they specialize in tearing stuff up. The Assyrians are coming. They don't even like you. So you need to, you need to be thinking about this. Since you don't want to, you don't want to respect God. He's sending something your way. He's sending somebody your, your way that, that can't stand you, that can't stand your daddy, your daddy's daddy, and, and can't wait to get a hold of you. So here comes the Assyrians. And guess what? News flash. It ain't gonna be pretty. When they get there, that land of milk and honey that you in, they about to tear it up and make it buttermilk. No, no, no. They they about to come up there and tear it up. And and guess what? Um, the people that are walking around in freedom, uh, uh y'all about to be taken captive all over again. And guess what? When we look at the carnage of this situation, it's going to be a bloody mess. It's going to be a bloody mess. When the Assyrians get there, it's going to be a bloody mess. I mean, but besides tearing your stuff down, uh, destroying your land, destroying your cop. Uh, crops, everything that you don't worship. You know, most of y'all worship your finances, you worship your status, you worship your families and all this other. So yeah, guess what? They're coming in to destroy all that. And guess what? The carnage is going to be absolutely ridiculous. The only thing that's going to remain when the Assyrians is done with y'all, Israel is going to be like two legs and a piece of an ear. Two legs and a piece of an ear of the whole body. The only thing that's going to be even recognizable is two legs and a piece of an ear. But you know what, though, Humpy, um, that sounds like that's pretty discouraging. But I've learned that even in destruction, that God can restore. Amen. Some of y'all ought to be saying, Lord God, I thank you for the moment that you broke me like you did, because I wouldn't be as strong as I am right now. Um, uh, they tell me that, you know what, when you break a bone and that bone heals, a lot of times it's stronger at the point that it was broken than what it was before, before it was broken. So some of us need to be broken so that we can finally get strong and, and we can stand upright. But you know what? When I looked at that, I learned that in destruction, God can restore. So can I, can, can I continue to teach? I know I ain't hooting and hollering. Um, here it is. Um, I'm about to be silly. Let me stop. In times of antiquity, um, here it is when um, 
when lions and wolves would often attack sheep, they would catch the weak sheep. They would catch the sheep that wasn't the tenor. They would catch the sheep that was caught out there, but they would catch the sheep and they would rip into them, Stevie Smith. That's why I tell folks, you know, some of you are complaining that the devil hurt you, but it was never his intention to hurt you. It was his intention to kill you. So you ought to praise God anyhow. But here it is. They would often attack the sheep. And um, the only thing that would remain is just bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. But check this out. Check this out. This, this is the thing that got me as I was studying. The flock would run off, of course. Because cats ain't worried about but saving their own hide. So stick with me. But the shepherd. This is a conversation I had with my daughter, Alice. The shepherd wouldn't run away from the carnage. As a matter of fact, the shepherd would pick up the broken pieces of the sheep. So if it was only a leg left, or if it was only an ear left, or if it was a piece of the hide left, the shepherd would pick up the pieces that were remaining, and he would take those pieces to the sheep owner. Why? Because he had to, an account had to be made for the losses. So even in that, you know, you saw that there was value in this sheep. There was value. This sheep had value. The reason being is I have to take this, I have to take the remains of the sheep to let the shepherd know. I mean, let the sheep owner know, look, this is where we take losses at. See, some I hope I hope this is is, is um is turning on some light bulbs today. So so here's here's a picture. This is a picture I got Humphrey. Stay with me, man. I, I, I love the way the Lord speaks. Um I see it as a picture of God here as as, as a shepherd. You know, um Talking about Brown, man, when I was busted and broken up, there was a point in my life, it wasn't, it wasn't much left there. Um, my life and, and, and the enemy had left nothing but carnage. I didn't have much worth to anybody. And sure enough, the sheep that I was running with, they left me there anyway, because they saw me as ruins. But here's the picture of God. He comes and picks up the pieces. And in this case, the pieces, two legs, and a piece of an ear, not even a whole ear. Right. Um, not much, if you ask me. Two legs and, and a piece of an ear. And God is saying Israel will be torn up. But even though they're torn up, they're not beyond repair. Mm -hmm. And he is willing to pick up the broken pieces. See, some of y'all on here are busted up. And some of y'all on here are broken. And some of y'all don't look real pretty right now. And some of y'all folks have run away from. And some of y'all folks have left for dead. And heck, some of y'all even see yourselves as a lost case. But I want you to hear me today. Um, God is saying, you're not beyond repair. Amen. God is saying, I can still restore you. Uh, hey, just like the $6 million man, I'm aging myself. We can rebuild you. Um, uh, we can make you, I can make you better. I can make you faster. I can make you stronger. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a higher value, a $6 million woman, a man. You get what I'm coming from? Instead of a $5 bag of dirt that you came from, you know what? If you let me pick up the broken pieces and let me put my hand on you and let me work with you, boy, I can, I can restore you even better than where you were before. I wonder if there's anyone here this afternoon that says, Lord, He'll talk and he's talking about me. I need you to pick up the broken pieces today. Um, Lord God, I need you to look at the ruins of my life and pick up the broken pieces right now. Um, Lord God, not only do I need you to pick up the broken pieces, but I need you to put me in your hands and restore me. I may, it may not be much left to me when people look at me. I may appear to simply be two legs and a piece of an ear, but I'm hearing this word that you have a way of picking up the broken pieces and restoring me into something beautiful and something strong and something powerful. So right now, my prayer, this is your chance to pray. This is your chance to pray. Lord God, pick up my pieces, pick up my pieces. And right now, pick up my pieces, Lord God. That's the title of my message right there. Lord God, pick up my pieces. I'm broken. There's not much left to me. It's not pretty right now. I'm in ruins. Um, what you see is carnage, but I invite you to pick up my pieces. Is there anyone this afternoon that would simply say, that's my prayer right now. That's my prayer my this prayer. afternoon.
That's my prayer. I, I'm going to give you some more here. Uh, I want you to know that God specializes in broken pieces and ruins. Um, and it's not like he hasn't spoken restoration before. If you go further down in the, in the Amos chapter 9, I'm giving you a scripture there, Humpy. And it's funny because this scripture is chapter 9, 11. I want to talk to someone that's in an emergency situation and you're thinking this is a 911 for my life. Um, I'm into pieces. My home is in shreds. Um, my life is in shreds. Um, my career is in ruins. Um, I'm falling all apart. So, um, uh, Amos 9 and 11 says, um, th this is what the father says, I will restore David's fallen tent. Mm. I will repair the broken pieces. I will restore the ruins. And he went on and he went on. But this refers to a time when, when Israel um, was down to nothing. I'm talking to somebody today. I don't know who you are. That's, I'm just going to keep on talking. Mm -hmm. um, he was down to nothing. And the funny thing is, even in the midst of their nothingness, um, in the midst of them not being in prominence, um, in the midst of them being broken and shattered into pieces, God was promising restoration. I'm talking to somebody this afternoon. So here it is. I'm talking to you. I'm pointing at the camera. That's how they do when they're trying to raise money. I'm talking to you. Here it is. Um, uh, the lion came and attacked you. Yes. Tore up everything. Mm -hmm. Some of you were stupid enough to allow the lion into your home, mm. into your family, mm. into your ministry, into your heart. Mm. You allowed the lion to come into your family. You allowed the lion to get too close to your career. And you've given, a, you've given the lion access to your emotions. And you know what? The lion came in and tore up everything. Mm -hmm. And now when you sit there, you're sitting in ruins, not much left of you. I'm talking to somebody this afternoon. I don't know. Y'all pray for me. Um, two bones and a piece of an ear is what you probably look like. Mm -hmm. Two bones and a piece of an ear. Well, here it is. Even though I ain't mentioned the head, I'm going to say look up. Mm -hmm. Why? Because my God is a restorer. Yes, he is. And, and you know what, George Johnson, I found out this is just for me looking at my life and, and me looking at this word. And it's so funny how I can look at the word and look at my life and say, well, this must be true. He works well with scraps. Yes. He works well with ruins. He works well with bits and pieces. So here it is. I dare someone to pray that prayer. If you're in that predicament saying, Lord God, pick up my pieces, pick mm -hmm. up my pieces. Mm -hmm. I need you to pick up my pieces right now. I need you to restore me right now pick up my pieces um why well, i want you to understand that god doesn't do this with an attitude like what we do you know how we go to help somebody when we tried to help them the first time they screwed up and we helping them but the whole time we saying i told you so that's yeah. what you get if you listened you wouldn't have been there I, I don't want you i want you to know that god doesn't function like that so he loves fixing up things and he loves reversing curses and circumstances so why don't you call him and say lord god i need you to pick up my pieces he desires to pick you up, even though the folks that was closest to you like kicking you while you're down. I'm just trying to help somebody tonight. Uh, I want you to understand that even though you may not look like much, even though your situation looks like it's not salvageable, I want to tell you again, nothing is too hard for my God. I dare somebody to put that on their timeline today. Nothing is too hard for my God. You're not really telling everybody else. You're just speaking to yourself. See, sometimes you got to encourage yourself. So I'm talking to the one that's in that pit, that one that's broken down into pieces. I dare you to just go ahead and put it in there. Yep, um, nothing is too hard for my God. Self, that's what, how you do it today. Self, nothing is too hard for my God. Nothing. Uh, just think about this. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Someone may say, well, Brown, I ain't nothing. Uh, I'm just a nobody. Yep, I got, I got titles. I got degrees. I got stuff that I represent. But truth be told, um, Right now, I'm feeling like nothing, and you know what? Um, I have nothing. Um, I've been torn down to nothing. My poor feelings have been smashed, and my heart has been broken into nothing. I don't know if I can even love again, but here it is. I want to remind you how just how awesome and amazing my God is. Do you know the universe that we so um, find ourselves in awe of? It was formed from nothing. Mm. <laughs> It was formed from nothing. Go back to, to the first book. You ain't even, I ain't got to send you flipping through the pages of the Bible to try to find it. Go back to the first book and you'll see that the universe was formed from nothing. I want somebody to remember that this afternoon. So again, nothing is too hard for my God. And so here it is. I, I said it earlier. It was funny how 
you know, in these situations when sheep are attacked, the flock run away. When it get hot and heavy, the flock runs away. Ain't no ride or die when you when you when 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 your life is at stake. Ain't, ain't so many people standing with you when all hell breaks loose. Um, and when the fire is too hot, you get what I'm saying. Um, and, and what happens is the sheep move on while the shepherd comes to pick up the pieces. Thank God for Jesus. Mm. Um, so here it is. Some of y'all need to stop this. That's another thing I came to do, Humpy. Mm. I don't know if I'm talking to you, but since I can see you, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> you need to stop tripping on people who left you when you were in a bad place. You need to stop tripping on people mm. who didn't have no time for you when you was falling apart and in pieces and your world was in shambles. And I know some of them may have been blood relatives. Some of them may have been sorrows and friends or whatever. Some of them may have been cash you knew since you was in elementary school and you carrying an attitude right now because when you was in pieces, you expected them to be there with you. But let me tell you something, sheep don't stay with them. The, the flock won't stay with you when you when you mess around in them ruins because they ain't trying to get what you got. Mm. So stop tripping on that. Stop tripping on that. But I can guarantee you, and I know you know this now, if you've been there, I, I, I didn't talk to you. I met you. When I, we, 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 I get it right, doctor. Speaking in tongues. We reacquainted when you was in the middle of something hot and heavy in your life. And guess what? One thing I can tell you, and you should be able to testify that even though you were going through, Jesus was still there with you the whole time. The whole time. So I'm talking to somebody this afternoon that's still tripping on folks because they wasn't with you when you was going through. They didn't stand the way they should have. You know, hey, you was family. You supposed to have been down like that. You was friends because you was down like that. We ace boom cool from back in the day. You should have been down. You should have been there sympathizing. But guess what? You went and got so caught up in them and you forgot that the whole time Jesus was there. And when is he ever going to be enough for you? Mm -hmm. So here he is. He was there to pick you up the whole time. And what I'm trying to say is it's just like for Israel, God has not forgotten nor forsaken you. Mm -hmm. So here it is. Let me go back to what we said a few days ago. I like to do things in repetition. See, and when, we, when we're playing sports and George Johnson can relate to this, you only get good at something when you do a lot of it in repetition. Mm -hmm. uh, it only becomes secondhand when it becomes repetition. You only believe it when you put it in your head enough. So here it is. I know we said this a few days ago, but I'm talking to someone that's right now feeling like their world is falling apart, like they're broken into pieces. I want you, because I said God has not forgotten you nor forsaken you, this is what I want you to put on your timeline this afternoon. The Lord is with me. Mm -hmm. We're going back to that again. Mm -hmm. The Lord is with me. So I want you to hear me. He is not giving up on you. So why are you so quick to give up on him? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. We talked about this in Sunday school. Has he not? done enough to have some proof in the pudding? Mm -hmm. Has he not done enough for you to know that he's faithful? Has he not done enough to show you that he loves you? Has he not done enough to show you that you know what? He is more than willing and able to do what he can for you. Because again, you ain't, you don't deserve none of this good stuff that you got. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. You, you ain't so smart. You ain't so lovable. But I'm telling you right now, God loves you in ways that man can never love you. Because I guarantee you, you know what? You mess around and bump into someone. They don't like you because they don't like the corn on your baby toe. Or they don't like the fact that, you know, you got this scar and that scar. But you know what? He loves you despite all of that stuff. And so here it is. I need you to understand again. The Lord is with me. me. Mm -hmm. And so here it is. Your, your, your feelings are saying that you're forsaken. You know how we get in our feelings, you know, um, it, it's hard, it's heavy, it's hot, it's dark. And, you know, when I'm in my feelings, Lord God, uh, where are you? Lord God, I, I'm cursing the day I was born. And again, like Job, you don't know, but there's something going on in heaven. And you know what? Um, the, the, the father is calling out your name. You can't hear it because you're too busy whining and complaining and bickering and acting stupid and cussing folks out and quitting and everything else. The whole time, though, the Lord is uh, the father's up in heaven calling your name. Yo, shut up. I got something cooking in the kitchen for you. You know what? I got a perfect plan for your circumstance. Um, guess what? I'm going to get some glory out of what you're going through. If you would just shut up and stop looking at you and look for me for a minute. If you would just go ahead and worship me. I know you got off track, um, but that's all right. I sent someone your way to get your attention. Um, I know you done lost your mind, but guess what? I'm restoring your mind. If you would just listen, if you would just be still and know that I'm God, if you would stop worshiping mm -hmm. some of the stuff that you've been worshiping, if you 
you stop putting so much stock in the people, places, and things and start looking to the hills from where truly comes your help, you will be just fine. But that's too busy. If you're too busy looking at you, that's why you can't see me. Mm. You're stuck into your feelings. That's why you feel like you're forsaken. Mm. But here it is, though. One of the names of our God is El Imuna, faithful God, He's faithful. Is there anybody on this afternoon that will testify when you look through your history, when you look through your life and, and compare God to the folks that you can put all this stock in and you'll be able to say, my God is faithful. Is there someone that will testify, mm -hmm. my God is faithful, mm -hmm. even when I'm not full of faith? Mm -hmm. Even when my faith is failing, my God is faithful. Can I find one doggone witness today that will speak up and say, yes, I know my God is faithful even when I'm faithless. Come on. Yes, he's faithful. I got he's one. Faithful. I got he's one. Faithful. I got one. I got one. So here it is. I'm going to back that up. You know, everybody admires Paul. Mm -hmm. Everybody admires the Apostle Paul because that's one of the real cats. That was, man, this cat was the real deal. Um, so here it is. I'm, I'm going to speak some words that Paul spoke since y'all can't really get with what Brown said. Why? Because y'all got too much dirt on me. You know, you don't want to hear what I got to say just because, you know, um, it's Brown saying it. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 13. Write it down. Amen. It says, if we are faithless, it's going to help somebody here today, uh, Deaconess, right? If we are faithless, he will remain faithful. Why? Because he cannot disown himself. Mm. I hope that helps somebody today. I hope that helps somebody today. I'm going to say that again, just for someone to say, you know, I get so many people saying, Pastor, I'm struggling with my faith right now. Um, uh, uh, I, I had so many cats reach out to me. Pastor, my faith is just about gone. Um, my girlfriend left me and I ain't got no faith. Um, my dog done died. My fist jumped out the tank and uh, um, um, my faith is failing. Um, you know what? Um, I, I, I'm stuck with eating these ballpark franks, you know, and I used to be eating steak. My faith is failing. But I want you, I want you to hear me. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 13 says, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful. Amen. He cannot disown himself is there someone that says he's talking about me uh sometimes sometimes the lord will allow us to fall apart amen sometimes he'll allow the bottom to fall out of our lives y'all i mean he'll allow it I, I didn't say he makes it happen sometimes he'll allow it you know it's just like uh, we we're talking this morning you know i asked humpy in sunday school class i said humpy are you in control of your thoughts and your actions she's like yeah see the lord will allow humpy to act a straight up fool if she wants to he will he'll, he'll allow her to even say you know what i'm not doing this christian thing no more uh i'm done with this church thing that's her choice you get what i'm saying and, and sometimes he allows us to act straight up so that we can fall apart right in hopes that we would come to our senses and that we would seek him. You get what I'm saying? And, and finally come to a point, because some of y'all really still need to know this. I'm going to say this today. And I know I may be offending someone. That's why you're supposed to be praying for me, Humpy. I hope you ain't stopped, because I'm, I'm about to offend somebody. So here it is. What he's hoping that you would finally get to a point where not only do you seek his face, but you'll finally see him as being enough. Mm -hmm. See, see, and that's the sad thing is we got folks that's been in church all their life. We got folks that said they've been Christians all their life, but for some reason, God just ain't enough. I got, I got the Lord, but I need more. Jesus is mine, but I need more. I need more. Uh, and and, and, I, and I'm, it's like, okay, um, you can say what you want to say, but your actions say everything. You get what I'm saying? Uh, he's not sufficient for you. And and some of you dumb bunnies think that you're, that you're super self self-sufficient. I, I, I mean, I got family members that get on here and I got friends that get on this on, on, on Facebook and talk about that they self-made men and women. God, that's so stupid. That's so stupid. If you can make yourself, let me see you make men. Let me give you the recipe. I'm going to keep it simple, humpy. Go out and find some dirt. Just find some dirt. 
You can wet it, spit on it, whatever you want to form it, okay? But I want you to form it in the shape of a man or woman, whatever you want to do. And after you do it, I want you to bend over it wherever the mouth is. I want you to put your mouth on it and blow in it. And then stand back. And then let me know if it gets up and starts walking around. I want to see that. You, you tell me I made myself. But so if you can make yourself, you can evidently make another man or a woman. And if that's the case, I want you to go whatever dirt. You can get the red dirt in Oklahoma, the black dirt in West Virginia. You can get this brown dirt in Kansas. You can move anywhere you want. Whatever kind of dirt you want, find the dirt, form it up. You can pour, you can hose it, you can spit on it, whatever it is, but you take it to form it. Once you form it, I want you to find its mouth. I want you to blow in it. If it gets up and starts walking around, then you can tell me you made yourself. If that's not the case, you need to shut your stupid mouth up. and sh You need to shut up. You ain't make yourself. You ain't make yourself. So here it is. Um, Amos said it later on. He says, through God, God says it through Amos. If you seek me, you'll live. See, some of y'all feel like you're dying because you're seeking everything else but God. Mm -hmm. You're seeking everything else but the life source. You get what I'm saying? He says, um, seek me and live. Some of y'all, I mean, falling apart because you're holding on to your pride. You're holding on to your principles. You're holding on to your attitude. You're holding on to all that stuff that absolutely sucks. That's not of God. And he says, you know what? If you would just seek me, you'd live. See, um, some of you are just, and here it is again, some of you are just, some of you are just existing. Mm. you're inhaling and exhaling but that don't mean you're living you're walking around but that don't mean you're living you might even have a lot of money in the bank and this that and the other but that don't mean you're living you're just existing but he says you know what that's not why i came here that's jesus and i ain't come here for all that garbage i came here that you may have life and life more abundantly as i mean i came to that you live you get what i'm saying but some of you dumb buddies are messing around and pursuing the wrong stuff you know you're seeking the wrong stuff and, and, and you're just existing you're wasting space right now mm. you're, you're in these tough times where oxygen is becoming more and more scarce you're you're you're, you're wasting oxygen um, um I, I need you to understand that um he says if you would seek me you would live so i need someone to understand that says yes uh pastor my life my world it seems like everything around me is falling apart or has fallen apart when news Flash, my God redeems. I, I need you to hear me. He restores and he redeems. Um, even if you're just two legs and a piece of an ear. Mm -hmm. So what is Brown saying? After all these messages coming out, convicting and slap you upside the head. I'm not going to be that guy that's going to damn anybody to hell. That's not me. That's not me. And if anybody's expecting me to be that type of preacher, you got the wrong cat. What I want to say to anyone that's under the sound of my, I always say in church, my weak voice, I need you to hear me out. 